I would never, never. like um, like imagine saying yeah. that to the she's parent. gonna be beating all the dicks Not off of her, girls. right? Yeah. Exactly. It's like she's gonna be a looker, buddy. Yeah, right, whatever. It's like fucking call the cops immediately. You know what I mean? But that's but uh, but whatever. It, it's like you said. You already said. Even at five years old, you could whip that mammal's ass. That. All right, we're back, everybody. Welcome to the Airstream, the virtual Airstream Studios. They're a little different this week for me. If you remember the extended SKU universe, you've seen these surroundings already. It's at my new office at the new house here, new setup. It's still very much a work in progress. It will probably change over the coming weeks, but this is, I'm, I'm in it for the long haul here, I reckon, unless everything goes to shit. Anyway, that's the plan. So, yeah, I'm here. Chose where he's been at. How's it going over there? It's going good, buddy. I got to tell you, seeing that from Dixie with Love poster behind you got me in my feels. Aye. It is yeah. a lovely design, isn't it? It is a lovely uh, design. Yeah, over here, there's some ravens in the yeah. picture, and it, it it also hits, but it's like, it's I got a real bad glare on it, and that's yeah. one of the things I need to need to work out. So anyway, yeah, it's hitting. And also, I don't have any kind of climate control in here yet. That's still one of the things on the list, so... If I get all sweaty and whatnot, please, please forgive me. It don't hit. Hey, we got that in common. I still don't have uh, any type of climate control in my attic. You know, used to what would happen was the attic was where I recorded during the winter and I would move my shit downstairs where there's air conditioning. But then I've since had a baby and uh, that little fuck took up my downstairs studio. So I'm just up here sweating my ass off. Yeah, it'd be like that. Uh, it do. Things change when you have a baby. Uh, one do. thing that one thing that changed for me and has only increased over the years is I have grown uh, ever more terrified of death. Let's we'll take a hard yeah, left turn here. Me too, uh, buddy. Me so too. I used to. I didn't. I've never been a thrill seeker or nothing. But I never like before I had kids, which I had them early at twenty five. But prior to that, you know, every person in their early twenties thinks they're going to live forever anyway. So I didn't really. Mm -hmm think that much about it but if you brought it up like what well, if you got smashed by a bus or something i'd be like nah, well what are you gonna do you yeah know, right like, that, that would have been, been my response to it but ever since i had kids it's like no i need to be here i need to be around and then in recent years for me it's developed or devolved or however you want to put it further into this like not a full-blown existential crisis but basically i got a little too high one night and was laying in my bed and was like what is nothing what is right, nothingness right. how the fuck you know like and ever since then it's like i don't want to I ain't, I ain't trying to fuck with all that anytime soon. Uh -uh. I bring all this up because I saw the other day, I've seen this plenty of times before. I feel like this pops up on the internet every now and then, but I saw it again recently the other day. Uh, this quote people always bring, it's like a, like a, a apocryphal quote because I don't mm -hmm. ever see it attributed to any one person, but that, that someone on the internet will say something like, you know, they say, or, you know, scientists say, that the first person to live to the age of 150 or 200 or whatever is alive right now. Like people have right. already been born that are going to live that long and who knows longer, right? right? Like I've heard that said multiple times. So I started looking into it a little bit and now it's way too sciencey and shit, obviously, for us to get into any real detail on. But basically it's this. What are you gene? saying that we can't understand science at a high level? No, it's like gene therapy stuff, which if we were talking about, you know, you know, getting a good pair of pants, making you feel better than men, you could talk about it, right. you know, that type of gene <laughs> therapy. But like, <laughs> but they, they can alter stuff in the human genome now. Right. And they, I mean, or they're learn they're getting there. And through doing that, through like genetic manipulation, one thing they think they will be able to do is turn back the clock a little bit, reverse aging at least to some degree, they've apparently already done this in mice. They have clinical trials right now in primates and monkeys for doing this specifically just for your eyes, like making your, like old people with glaucoma or you go right. blind or whatever, like turning that back and making your eyes hit again. Yeah. So that's like coming down the pike right now. It's in clinical trials and they, they, they said there's no upper limit to what else they could do with that. It could potentially be applied to any tissue in your body and it makes you like right, your heart. younger. So like you, this is a thing that may happen in the near future. So I just thought, you know, philosophical conversation, how you feel about that. And it's relevant to the show. Cause like, I mean, this shit going to be so expensive when it yeah. first comes out. That's another thing too. Is like, well, I heard I'm reading about this. I'm like, okay, all right. Well, that's a, 
that's a possible play right uh-huh. there. That'll work. And I've genuinely never cared much about money. I just, I like, I only care about having enough to not worry about it. Right. That's what I've always Provide. said. And that's true. Uh, but with this, I was thinking like, man, I, I don't know. I'm going to need to make a whole lot of money because yeah. that's going to be yeah. real expensive, but I'm going to need to be able to get that youth juice yeah. or whatever when it comes out. Uh, and you feel like it's going to be primarily for rich people, at least of at course. first. And so let's just start there. But like, what do you think about that notion? Well, I mean, number one, it'll it'll definitely be exclusively for rich people at first, but it'll probably be exclusively for rich people for a very, very, very long time, except under the conditions that I could see a dude like Jeff Bezos exactly being like, well, I want my people to have it because see, I can lock them into an 80 year contract. See, you already you, got there. I yeah. was going to say me and smart Mark were talking about this. And of course he just smart marked all over it. I said something, you know, it's like, I was like, I, I mean, I'm going to need to make a lot of money. Cause obviously that's going to be some rich people shit. And Mark was like, see, I go the other way. Uh, he's like, I think these corporate overlords will be chomping at the bit to be able to keep their peons, their wage slaves alive for 200 years. And be, and he's like, and you know, make it where the only way you can get the youth juice is if yes. you keep working Not for the contract. company. It's like, it's yeah. like a company, company store type of thing, but for staying alive. And yeah. so they just, they want people to work forever. Right. So they would totally, and as soon as he said that, I was like, well, yeah, I okay. guess that, but opting to use it, like, like anyone who's just going to buy it, independently to use it themselves because they want to live longer that's that's going to be rich people yes yeah. that, and that's what i was about to say like it the 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 poor people that it will be available to it will be a thing like you sign a contract and you agree to take this shit but the second you stop working we flip a switch in you and right. you fucking die but the rich people part is like if you have enough money, you'll be able to get it without Jeff Bezos being your overlord. You know what I mean? And so right. in that in that case, that's why I want to make a lot more money. Now, I'll say this, like, it's one of those things where, like, there's so many things in, hu- in human history, technology-wise, where it's like, you don't want to be the first. You don't want to be the person beta testing a thing. You want to wait until... Dude, it's like with me, like I don't buy the PlayStation 5 the second it comes out. I give it a year, see what people say, let them work out all the bugs and shit like that. But it's not necessarily just the bugs, but it's just like I'm imagining right now, hypothetically, you know, Elon Musk or whoever it is that has this youth juice just comes to me randomly and goes, hey, I've got it. I'm going to give it to you for free. You'll live to 200 years old. It's not appealing to me right now because all that would mean is that I have to live I'm outliving everybody and I'm going to have to go to everybody's funeral, even people who were born like way later than me. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like if I, if I get yeah. this and my son doesn't, I have to watch my son live to be 93 years right. old and then die. And that would be horrible. But like the thought of if my whole family got it is amazing because like, and man, I know that like, you know, I, I'm about to be 37 years old. Most people would be like, well, that's, you know, you still got your whole life ahead of you. And it's like, not really when it comes down to like the male expectancy for being alive. Then you've got like the heart problems in my uh, family. Then you just add all this shit together. And it's like, if the male life expectancy is 72 or 73, like it currently is, I'm at middle age. Like I'm, I'm fucking close to middle age. And not only is there so many more things that I want to accomplish. But like, I think about like, I've only got this window of time left with my son, you know, going back to what you were talking about is being a father really makes you like get crazy about this shit. And so now I'm like, dude, any amount of money that I had would, would I pay simply for 40 more years to watch my son grow? Absolutely. But then like, right. dude is, is, is wary, weary, worry, very wary as people were about like the vaccines that we certainly right. needed in order to save our life. Like what the fuck is in the youth juice <laughs> you know what I mean? or whatever, which I know it would maybe wouldn't be juice. It's just like, Hey, we have the technology now to like give you the heart of a four year old. I don't know. It's like the way I understand it is like through genetic manipulation, they can essentially like reset the age of your cells in your body. Like, all of them like right wow. now they can't do all of them but that's right. the idea is that in the that they will eventually be able to and the guy the harvard the harvard 
old oldness doctor that I was reading the interview with or whatever. I don't know what is uh, he's. A, I guess he's geriatrist. A he's, he's a geneticist, probably. Yeah. I would assume the Harvard geneticist who was being interviewed in this article I read about this, who's working on this. He said that like he said, I don't think they asked him like, Can "You live to be two hundred? And he was like, "Honestly, I don't think you should put an upper limit on it." He's right? Like, because he's like everything that he said, everything that we have right now that we already know we can do, and projecting that out in the future. He's like, I think. You go in and get this procedure. I think it could de-age you by like 50%. That's what this right. dude said, this Harvard geneticist said. So it's like, if you're 70, you go in, you come out, you're 35. Again, right. Like and physically or whatever, which would be crazy. It's There's so many wild implications of this because it's like, when I'm 70, Bishop and Benton will be 50 something. And if I did this, then I'll be like physically younger than them. Like I would look like I do now and they'll be, you know, like 50 year old men or something like that type of thing. And then I'd call you Benjamin <laughs> Butthole. Can you, right, you already got it planned out. But then can you like, can you just keep doing this? Stuff? That's what I was going like, to say. Like, what, you, why is it immortality you, on the table? Well, I mean, I, I, this dude said, he said, I don't think anybody should put an upper limit on it. He didn't straight up say like, I think immortality is on the table, but I feel like he fucking implied it by right. saying that. It's like, just and, do it again. Right. And so, yeah, then you have, but also you have like mega dynasties and all these generations alive at the same time and all this shit. I actually read a sci-fi book that uh, it was called Pandora Star. It's got a bunch of wild shit in it. And in that, humans can do this. They can go, you can go and get de-aged, de-ageified or whatever. And so that's what happened. Because that's what I was going to say. You talk about like, if you make enough money to get this done, you've been relatively successful in your first life, right? And the way money works, unless they change how money works, and I don't think right. they're going to do that, like money begets money or whatever, right. like by your second or third life, you don't have to work or do anything if you don't want to. You've got the, you know, accumulating interest. wealth of generations and the interest and stuff. Yeah, exactly. And then you spread that throughout your family. I mean, shit would get wild quick. because Right. Like, I mean, the Rothschilds with, will rule the world forever. And that's not a, I'm not, that's not an anti-Semitic thing. Also, I'm just saying. Where's everybody going to go? You know right? what I mean? Like if yeah. people stop dying and and like, I mean, it would be insane, and it seems like it actually it doesn't. It's not relegated just to the you know the realm of science fiction anymore. Or I mean, I guess it still is for now. But like people who work in this field think that like this shit is coming, and it's wild to it's real wild to think about. And I think also a lot of times people hear it and they picture old people like I don't want to be 150. I don't want to be 85. You know what right. I mean? And it's but like it won't be that. But that's not how it works though. Right. Like you do want to be 75 and go into a doctor's office and come out 38 30, or whatever, right. you know, like, of course you want to do that. Anybody wants to do that. So, I mean, like, uh, and I just imagine that dude, we, like just aging even towards 40, like we have, how different we feel from when you were 20 or a teenager right. or something. Imagine getting to 70 and knowing how much aging don't hit your ankles barely work yeah. and all this stuff. And what, and then you go to the doctor's office and you come back out, you're 40 years younger physically. So you feel that way. It'd be insane, dude. It'd dude. be like, the hitness drug on earth. I feel like waking about, up tomorrow at 20, like if you wake up tomorrow at 22 years old, physically or something, how crazy good you would feel. Oh my God. You know, like it'd be nuts. It would be nice for me if I actually felt my own age. Uh, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like, dude, um, th and I'm thinking about, this is no longer philosophical. This is like fantasy booking shit like that. But like, obviously there's going to be complications. Mainly what you mentioned was like, where the fuck do we all go? Dude, I think about that in terms of just every single time we bury someone in a cemetery. Like, eventually, mm -hmm. just that is going to create a fucking real estate problem, meaning that everyone should be cremated. We should be launching everybody into space. And speaking of space, in order for this to work, we're going to have to colonize the moon, mm -hmm. Mars. Mm -hmm. all, we're going to have to do all of that shit. Right. We're also going to have to build, like, man-made islands. We're going to have to, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, because we got a lot of ocean space. So like, and I don't know if that's, I'm sure that's been posited by some people, but it's like, I'm certain that we have the technology to create man-made livable island structures because we're going to have to send people there if all these people are here. But look, getting outside of that realm, all the terrible things of it, like, dude, imagine this implication of it. You fucking Martin Scorsese goes and has this done and he's got 70 more years to make hits. Right. Like Quentin Tarantino, like Martin Scorsese is still a brilliant filmmaker, but age is coming for him. Imagine mm. if that guy got another shot to keep fucking doing it. Fucking Tiger Woods, man. Imagine Tiger Woods. He right. gets another shot to be 22 year old Tiger Woods. It would be amazing. Now, a lot of it, it's like, well, that would be unfair. Right. But like, 
right. from a spectator standpoint, Brady could go back. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, that, I mean, that is another one of the implications is it's like people age out and make room for new people. New people. And that's an important part of the process. And if that stops happening, but again, I think, again, I think part of the idea is you got the money to afford this anyway. You, and you don't need to go back to work or whatever. You don't need to keep working because of how generational wealth be and all that. So people still will age out even though they'll stay alive. And then they'll just, you start a whole, that's the other thing too. You start a whole other thing. Like you right. got the money, whatever you go in, get de age. You're like this time around, I'm going to be a fucking, I don't know, a bowler, a professional bowler, you know, or yeah, whatever. Yeah. Like you just it's, do a whole it's Bill different Murray. thing. It's Bill Murray right. and Groundhog's Day. Like, cause you know that, that movie, like they don't say it in the movie, but in the original story, he goes through that cycle like for thousands 10, and thousands years of or something yeah, like right. That. yeah right which explains why he he's all of a sudden a master piano player he's all mm -hmm. of a sudden because he just like dedicates so many years of his life knowing that it's get, like you could fucking do that shit man right. like i could go back to fucking college go back i could go to fucking yeah. college but like yeah there's just so many and, and again like you said you've already got the generational wealth you've already got that part established you could there there's there are certain people, not all of them, but there's certain people who exist like your Mr. Rogers types who like would they're like, I've got all the money in the world. Now I have more time to make this world a better place. I have more time to like in like invest in other things because I know I've got time for myself. Like it's it's just adding more days like it's interesting. But but, you know, the, the thing is, and I know Smart Mark mentioned all this and I'm about to, but like. Whenever something like this occurs, whatever's the worst possible scenario right. will happen happened. first. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it, it just will. Sure. Like every single fucking time you go, like you read about like, oh, they're going to do insert whatever here. And it's like, okay, quick. Think of how this would be horrible. It will be that. It right. will 100% I mean, be yeah, that. Yeah, that's what's happening with AI right yeah. now. You know what I mean? But, yeah. Right. It do, yeah, that is how it often go. And on a related note, apparently using some of the same types of tech, this whole, all this genetic modification stuff is real wild and they, they can do all kinds of shit with it. Another thing that they theoretically could be able to do using this same or adjacent technology in the future is like, you heard of designer babies? Yeah. Like, you ever see that movie Gattaca? This is my daughter Gucci. With Ethan Hawke? Yeah. Gattaca? No. Yeah. You never seen that? That's a really no. good movie. You should watch it. It's from like 99 or something like that. It's kind of like this. It's like, well, anyway, whatever. You should check it out. It's a hidden movie, hidden sci-fi movie. Uh, but yeah, you could like, parents could go to the doctor and get their baby like genetically modified in the womb. And, and the idea- the Six I, foot sick black guy. That's right, what I well, want. The idea initially is that it would be to prevent hereditary diseases or diseases right. that a kid is born with, which I was like, I, to me, it's like, I mean, who could have a problem with that? Right. Yeah, right. Like, nobody, but that same technology Christians probably could further be used to do all kinds of shit. You make know an army. Like, like, yeah, right. Yeah. Make them. Yeah. Make them more. I don't know. Yeah. Taller, more muscular, stronger, faster, whatever. Like, can you make them? I know a guy who tried to do that once. <laughs> what? Hitler. Oh yeah, right. Yes. Well, that's the <laughs> thing. Eugenicist. It's yeah. It's eugenic. Right. I mean, it's kind of it. Yeah. It is sort of like that. It's also like if that became a thing and it started happening before very long at all, like rich people would literally be objectively superior. Yes. To poor people. You know what I mean? Like yeah. right now, they already think and act like they are, and then like in a you know in a lot of ways they kind of are because of like the privileges that come with that. You know what I mean? Like yeah. They have better opportunities and they have better resources growing up and all that shit. So in a lot of ways, they are better. You're better off, obviously, at the very least, to be a rich kid than a poor kid. But like, but it in, wouldn't in, even be close. In, in this future, though, it's like two different species almost. Right. Like, and like poor, poor kids who don't have it would be like inferior in every way. So right. then like, how do you, how do you compete or rise? You know, how do you have any kind of class mobility or something in that, in that? Uh, scenario and shit like it's just the stuff is wild and it's like this is the type of shit that's in science fiction books and movies and stuff but some of these things are like you know coming or at least the possibility right. to do it is coming to do it is coming I mean you know like I'm pretty sure scientifically right now I think I believe they could clone a human easily if they yeah. want to but ostensibly they don't because the scientific community agreed that that would be immoral now you know if you ask Alex Jones China got a whole army full of clones over there just ready right. to go but like so 
you know, who knows how much of that shit they'll actually do, even if they can do it. But the ability to do some of this wild ass shit is like, is coming like in our lifetimes, it's going to be here. Like it's shit's about to get wild, bro. I know. And real wild. What's up y'all. You know what hits music songs, songs hit, you know, what hits just about harder than anything else in the world is when you're listening to a song that comes on the radio or the internet or whatever, and you get this profound feeling you're like this song might as well be about me or about my town or about my wife or about my life or whatever. It's just every Limp Biscuit song for me personally. Absolutely. At the age of 13, without a doubt, was written yep. directly for my white trash self. We've all had that feeling before. We know how awesome that is. You connect with that song immediately. Well, imagine having the power to give that same incredible feeling to someone you love anytime you want to with an original song just for them from Song Finch, written, written just for them, Song Finch lets you create an original radio quality song inspired by your own life and the people you love. It's completely unique, personal, and last forever. The way it works is Song Finch walks you through a simple process to get your original song created. You tell them who the song is for, what kind of song you want, what genre, and then you give them some personal details about the subject matter of the song. Then an actual Song Finch musician of your choice will write, record, and produce your original song all in four to seven days. All right? If you've been around for a while, you know we've done this before. We first did this a few months ago, and we're absolutely blown away with the results. And so we did it again. This time, we commissioned a song on the subject of our beloved Big Papa producer. Cho, play him a little clip of how that turned out, and then oh, take it away. I would love to. Attention span of a goldfish. If something ever happened to Laura, you'd be hopeless. If something ever happened to Laura, you'd be dead in a week. Don't forget you almost died drinking sweet tea. BPP, big proper producer. Go ahead, strap in, it's gonna be super. Go ahead, strap in, it's gonna be a roast. From the sun who loves you the most. How much ketchup can you actually swallow? I don't think you're supposed to use the whole bottle. If you spill something, God for your wife Cause you've never washed clothes in your entire life Let's not talk about your man crush on John Wayne Or how you can't ever remember anybody's name The only thing you ever remember are baseball facts Not even good ones, okay. obscure ones Who cares about that? You got the attention span of Yeah, so, I mean, you know, Trey, I don't know about you But uh, my man Wayson Key absolutely nailed a uh, big pop a producer there. And yes, that is the same artist we chose that that uh, did our POA rap song. There's thousands of other artists you can choose from, but my thing was like, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So I am going to give a special shout out to our buddy, Wayson Key. I mean, how hilarious was that? Fantastic, son. He don't was, miss. He don't miss. He absolutely don't miss. But whether your song is for, you know, mine's Father's Day, whether yours is for Mother's Day, uh, upcoming graduation, a wedding, or just to show a loved one how much you care, start your song now to lock in a top Song Finch artist. For a limited time, by the way, Song Finch is letting our listeners upload their song to Spotify for free so you and the lucky person you gift it to can listen to it anywhere Anytime, go to songfinch.com slash POA and start your song. After you purchase, you'll be prompted to add Spotify streaming for your original song free, which is a $50 value. Again, it's songfinch.com slash POA. Don't forget to share your song with us, too. songfinch.com slash POA. And yes, right now on Spotify, you can listen to Big Papa Producer. Skew! Hits. That's it. And there's, there's part of me that is like, man, of course we're going to miss this. You know what I mean? Like we're too old to be like, but th there's part of me that's like, hopefully relieved that we won't have to see a lot of this shit. Uh, because it's like, man, that's, that's, you know, it's going to take them a long time. Like, dude, the, the, the concept of America was so new and radical that we still ain't figured it out. Mm -hmm. Like, imagine this shit, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And like, what you're talking about is like, you know, the American dream, as any person with a brain knows, is borderline not real and kind of a facade. But right. but you do. But it is something where you do actually every now and then see examples of it. I would suggest that you are an example of it where you came from a bad situation and through a lot of luck, but also a lot of hard work have risen above your station and are a fucking success story and proof that like, hey. 
you know, again, the luck part has to have something to do with it. But like you can, to use a term that I hate, pull yourself up by your bootstraps. You you can, if you fucking put forth effort, it's possible, right? Mm -hmm. As rare as it is, it's possible. But in this scenario that you're pointing out, it's impossible. Like right. it, it's yeah. impossible. You can't compete with no genetic like, superhuman. Right. Like, like literally, you, you know, you just can't. Whatever you're born, it's gonna be. It's gonna be the caste system right. to a fucking like right. times a thousand. Like you're gonna like it. Like it's like in the uh, in the expanse. Like bro, if you're a belter, you're a mm -hmm. fucking belter. Like you're just a belter. Yeah, it's wild how things are cyclical, right? Because you're right, it will become like a feudal, like a yeah. feudal system, like the Middle Ages in no time. Like the rich people would be the landowning aristocracy or whatever. And then if you're born a peasant, you're going to die a peasant. You know what yeah. I mean? Like it's just because you, even if you try to rise up through the ranks, there's a very clearly defined ceiling. When they just start, won't let you. Because you, you can't, because like right. so you can't compete with these people who are objectively better than you because their parents. Right purchase those attributes or whatever because right. they had money to do so. Like you saw what yeah. happened to Little Finger, bro. You can't do it. Yeah. Like you just can't fucking do it. You can try, but I don't know, man. That shit's wild. But you know, I mean again, like thinking about the and obviously all the positive things about it is how they make the fucking sale. And I just can't quit thinking about and of course my dumbass brain literally just goes to like there's I would pay any amount of money I have to have not even on myself to have prime tiger woods back <laughs> I would uh -huh. fuck, like dude if i had 10 million dollars in my bank account and someone said for nine million dollars we can rebuild tiger like the fucking six billion dollar man i'd be like take it that's worth it for me another just, thing that would be rad dude not that he would necessarily do it but like imagine lebron goes in tomorrow and gets his yeah. procedure and he comes out and he's like i'm entering the nfl draft yeah tiger. boy you know what he's like i ain't even yeah. playing basketball this time around because you know People he speculate could. on shit like that all the time. It's like, He'd be a great this? tight end. Yeah, right. Like Kobe Bryant did that, but in the Premier League or something. You know right. what I'm saying? Like that type of shit. Like, uh, yeah, it's wild. It's wild to think about. This is why science fiction is my favorite genre. Of Me too. Read, is because like they think about this stuff, like stuff that like unraveling the implications of these like scientific possibilities that people are aware of. And then you read it, you're like, damn, that's wild. You know what I mean? Like yeah. the whole de-aging thing. I, you know, you could have, you could get de-aged again and have a, a baby. You'd be young again. Now you have another baby. That's your son, your new baby. But let's say you do this in 30 years. Your son's brother is Bane, who's 30 something. Bane got a kid. That's your grandkid. Your grandkid right. is older than your new son. Right. Right. And that, but that's Bane's, or that is the new baby's. Uh, nephew the old yeah, yeah baby, whatever like all that type like shit would get weird and wacky real quick with that with with all that stuff you know what i mean yeah all these generations been alive at once especially when they all start getting de-aged and stuff you got a patriarch of a super dynasty of multiple generations but he looks 37 right. or something like you know it's and also like how some people have said like how much information can we like keep in our brains like even if we're like physically physiologically get de-aged and stuff like oh they get you a hard drive mentally right yeah right how does that work you got a hard you like cloud you can upload memories and shit to the cloud and access them whenever you want to like fucking maybe right like yeah it's wild dude well dude shit like wild and that's how they'll 100 percent get because eventually when this starts becoming a thing there's going to be protests and you're going to take a side you know it's going to be like Look, this would be great for health benefits, but you got to understand that this is going to lead us back to a caste system and blah, 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 and all those people. And then you got all these other people, you know, on this side, which the, the vocal support for, for it would ironically come largely from people who can't afford it because they worship Elon Musk for some goddamn reason. Mm -hmm. But then, like, you've got your, like, assumed moral absolutists who aren't for it at all. But they can a hundred percent be swayed by the simple thought of like, I'll get more time with my son. <laughs> like, dude, there's there's not one thing on earth. And again, he's a baby and I'm young and healthy, but like there will come a day where I know my time with him is is coming to an end. And if I had the money, I don't I really I don't think I'd give a fuck what moral gray area it was in. I would get they'd go if the pitch was you get to hang out with your son for 50 more years. 
I'd go, I don't even want to hear the rest. I'm fucking in. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Wouldn't you? Yeah, of course. I, like a hundred, a hundred percent. Dude, I told, I would a hundred, I would absolutely do this if I had the opportunity <laughs> yeah. to do it. It's like you said, if it, if the scenario was Elon Musk himself came to me personally, one-on-one and was like, Hey, I can do this for you. Come yeah. here and I'll do it. And say whatever. Then I guess probably I'd still be tempted, but no, but like, it's like, he's doing that right now with that Neuralink shit. Yeah. It's not de-aging. It's a whole different sci-fi thing. It, that's the cloud. Using your brain to, using your brain to manipulate your reality. Yeah. And all that shit. He's doing that shit right now. And he's got people lining up, you know, and dude, that's something I need to be tested a few years ago. Right. Absolutely. A few years ago, uh-huh. I was, I would have been like, man, hell yeah. That sounds awesome. Cause I like, he had me fooled. I me too. I worshiped years him. ago. I was like, dude, that's rad as hell. That sounds fucking super sweet. But now I'm just because of how he has showed his ass dog. Like just because of that. Now I'm like, I don't trust it at all. Ain't like, ain't no way I let him drill a hole into my skull. <laughs> And put Dude. a bunch of fucking robot wires into my brain and shit. But there's people lining up to let him do it, though. Let's so. stay on him for a minute, actually, because that's fascinating. Like the the flip, I, I would say that um, that Elon Musk is the Aaron Rodgers of the tech world uh, mm-hmm. in the sense that for years, both of them were like amongst my favorite people on the planet. I fucking love both of them so much. And ironically... I stopped liking them once they opened their goddamn mouth. <laughs> you know what I mean? They they really embody the it is it is better to be a, a, assumed a fool, stay silent and assumed a fool, than open your mouth and remove, and remove all, all doubt. doubt. Yeah. yeah, you know because like with Elon, man, I know me and you've talked about it so much because I agreed. I, I mean, early on in our friendship, we talked about this fucking dude because we were like, bruh, this is a real life. Tony, Tony Stark. fucking Stark. Yeah. Like I feel really, so ashamed to have ever thought that, man. I, but I did. I mean, but I did think that. Though. I don't think. I mean, hell, they put him in Iron Man too because right. it was a common sentiment. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, I mean, I don't think you should feel ashamed just because, like, I dare anyone to come to me and be like, I knew a hundred percent that he was going to turn out to be who he is now based on based on what fucking knowledge you had fifteen years ago. Because, like, fifteen years ago, like he literally presented himself like all his PR was like, here's a guy who is super into electric cars, he, the environment. His whole thing, shit. his whole thing. I remember because I loved it so much. His whole thing was like, I'm a businessman, but my businesses are centered on solving humanity's biggest problems. Like right. that's what, it was like the climate crisis and the car, electric cars and all that shit. Uh, the, the AI revolution, the singularity, whatever you want to put it. That's what the Neuralink thing is supposed to be. His theory on it was like, we, the only way to beat the AI is to become the AI. That's what right. this is all about. Like all these like big ideas and stuff that sounded great to, you know, space travel. Cause like, we're going to have to leave earth at some point, colonize the stars. I've always been in favor of that shit. So like he was doing all this stuff that just, I just super hit for me. And I was yeah. like, this guy's fucking legit. And then, like you said, he started talking, talking and tweeting and stuff. And it just gradually is like, man, this dude, he not only seems like a massive cringe lord, he seems like dumber than I yeah, thought he could possibly be. Yes. Like his sense of humor is literally that of like a 14 year old chronically online edge lord. Like right. he stares shit posts and memes and stuff, which are like, whatever, that's fine. But if you're like the richest, ostensibly you are the richest and ostensibly one of the smartest humans on planet earth like you are it's a bad look sharing fucking like anime memes and stuff about people like fucking it's it's weird and dumb like i it, i don't know it's just the whole thing has been wild like, he's and, also a dickhead like he constantly sure. he'll be sharing memes and stuff and like he does the fat jew thing and for those of you that don't know the fat jew is like this person's uh, their their name, their self proclaimed yeah. name. I'm not calling someone a fat Jew. Um, I'm, I'm not saying I never would. I'm just saying I'm not in this instance. Uh, he will like someone will share a meme. It'll hit for him, and he'll crop out their fucking name and any any uh you know sense that it came from them, and he'll share it, and then people will call him out on it. And he'll just be like, oh, you, uh, 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 when something goes uh, uh, goes on the internet, it's it's uh, uh, what people don't understand is it's pub pub domain. Uh-huh. And so, and also, I, I think it's uh, per- personally. I think that uh, it's it's easy for people to find uh, 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 who it was. And I'm just, I'm just, um, I'm just a meme guy. 
And it's like, you're, you've got the biggest platform ever. You're sharing memes and you can't credit the motherfucker. Like, I know that's right. like such small potatoes on the, the impact he's currently having on pop culture and, and the culture wars at large. But it's just little things like that that lets you know who a motherfucker is deep down. And he's a cocksucking dickhead. Um, but yeah, I was fooled. Um, have you seen the, the videos of like how the Neuralink be working? I mean, I definitely have seen some of them. I remember reading about it again a long time ago before he went full R word and whatnot. And I was like, so much of it sounded super rad to me at the time. I don't know that this, he also, that's the other thing too, that's become clear about him. He makes all these big grandiose promises that there's just no fucking way or ever right. gonna actually happen. And people have like seen through that now, but for a while people took him at his word. So he would talk about Neuralink and like the shit he would say. It's like, I imagine like, you know, again, you can kind of control your reality with your brain, like right. just by thinking stuff. But I, and if someone else has a Neuralink, you don't even have to have a conversation if you don't want to. You have to like, you got to give each other permission to link your Neuralinks together. But when you do that, you can just like share an emotion with a person. Like, you yeah, know, you know, how, like your wife, you're like, how are you feeling right now? You hook your Neuralinks up and then you feel the way she feels. You don't need empathy. You literally feel it like she can transmit it to you and you feel how that works and everything. And like, that shit is is insane. Or like think about having like a heads up display, but in your field of vision, you know what I mean? Like that yeah. apple, you know that augmented apple? reality. Augmented reality, but just yeah. having that exist like in your head. It's crazy. I would fucking love that shit. Me too. Perfect. But I don't trust this dude to no. deliver it. You know what because I mean? Because like what's he Mark, putting in there? Me and Mark talked about it and he was like, nah, fuck all that. That don't that, that don't hit and I was like, okay, remove him from it just objectively. None of that shit sounds cool to you. And of course Mark's like, no, no, it doesn't. See, <laughs> I mean, Mark's so full of shit. And it's like, come on, bro. It's you gotta the, at least admit that sounds pretty rad. Like right. the idea of that, you know, like, but he he won't do it. I can't imagine who it would have to be that was capable of doing something like this who would then be like, I can do this for you, that I would go, oh, that sounds rad, and I like that person. You know what I mean? Like, again, used to, it would have been Elon Musk. I don't know who the person now is who, if they had a competing Neuralink, I'd go, I'd get behind that one. Because, like, I guess some people would be like, what if Bill Gates did it? I'm like, mm, not him either. You know what I mean? Like, so it, it's almost like what, if a person well, has... That, that's part of the fallacy of this whole thing, though, dude, is that, like, you don't it don't have to have some billionaire figurehead. I mean, there's the money behind it or whatever, but like the people, the people on the ground floor doing this work in all these wild ass industries we're talking about are fucking science nerds who care right. about the work and like have, they're not evil. They're not That's sociopaths true. or whatever. I mean, some of them I'm sure are, but generally they're not. And they're the ones really doing it. Right. But, pe but people give, they think e Elon Musk, because he's been so effective and putting himself out there that way, People think he is the one doing all of it. Right. When he don't do shit. And it's like, but yeah, that's another thing with him. It's like, he ain't really doing none of it. Having said that, I still would not trust him to put some shit into my brain. Like, no. You know, because, but, because again, like, I don't trust that he doesn't have some backdoor deal with a Jeff Bezos or whatever. That's like, we're going to load this shit up with ads and we're going to load this shit up with subliminal messages that will get people yep. to... Uh, you know, hand over all of their wealth. Like they could trick, they could do all that shit. Here's a video um, of how this works. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I saw this. Is this is this real? Is this legit? I'm pretty sure. Okay. Neuralink starts with a surgeon drilling a hole in your head about the size of a coin. Then a robotic arm carefully inserts the ultra thin flexible threads into your brain. These threads are finer than a strand of hair and are equipped with electrodes that directly interact with the cells in your brain. This implant is capable of interpreting your thoughts and applying them to real life actions. Yeah, see. Like the the part to me that's crazy is like that dim dim wires they just go in your brain and then it, it then it just hits. Also, didn't they like put that in some chimpanzees who then started screaming uncontrollably and trying to beat themselves to death? So like seems like that don't hit. <laughs> you know, like, like the beta testing isn't going too smoothly over there. But, but dude, it, it, as, as a big like sci-fi nerd and shit, it, it you, what you said earlier about how like the reality that we live in is anytime one of these things gets proposed or posited, if you're being realistic, you do have to then say, 
what is the worst possible, yeah. most dystopian version of this? Because that is what will happen. And that's a real goddamn shame because like, it, it is. the things themselves, the ideas of them, I, I live for that. Sh I love that shit. But the reality we live in, the people that we have in charge and the way profit drives everything and all that stuff, it's like, it just won't none of it ever work out that way. And I it's think a, it's a bummer. I know? think the best and most recent example of that is either the Internet at large or just social media. Like when social media was first proposed on paper, it's the greatest fucking idea ever, dude. It's like you you are connected with used to before the phones and stuff like that, like you might not even see one of your relatives for years or only mm -hmm. talk to him through letters and shit. And now it's like, and also used to, it was like, you know, back in the day, I remember when I was in high school, my dad would always tell me, he's like, he's like, Hey, he's like, I know that you're friends with these people. You think they're your best friends. He goes, but the reality is, and something you right. need to understand is that there's a lot of these people you will never see again. Right. Like you will, He's yeah, we like, all got told that. Yeah, he's like, there's people who were my best friend, and the last time I saw them was graduation day. Now, granted, there's part of me that wishes that was true about sure. some people. Right. You know yeah. what I mean? Uh, yeah. Like, that didn't come true, but I wish it had of. But, like, now that's not a reality. Like, in, in retroactively, too, like, my dad, and it's, and it's a lot of old people love Facebook for this reason. It's like, for so long, I just lost touch with all these people who were so important to me and there was mm. no way. And now I can keep up with all of them and I get to see what's going on in their life. I don't have to run into it to them at the mall and then them give me the fucking cliff notes version of what's going on in 30 years. I can see it on their timeline and all that stuff is like really beautiful and it's great. And like you can work with people like you can like, dude, what we're doing right now is because of the Internet and social media. Like mm -hmm. we're able to like imagine early on in our career, if someone had said like, hey, one day you'll be able to do a podcast. First off, we'd have gone, what's that? What's mm -hmm. a podcast? But like you don't even have to be in the same room as the people, which means that you never have to like set up these interviews or fly places. It's great. But then what really happened with social media is that it got taken over by ads. It got to be a place where people could share their most fucking hateful thoughts. Uh, it got to where old people could get scammed. Like the worst possible version immediately fucking happened. And it sucks dick. And it's like, there's no way to stop that from ever happening because the people that create these things are funded by people who have the worst fucking intentions possible. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, it, it don't hit, um, uh, the whole, that social media thing I was thinking just yesterday, like, is it still mammals and stuff out there using Facebook the way oh, it yeah. was originally intended? Oh, yeah. It's still happening. Okay. Yeah. Cause see, from my perspective, and of course my perspective is very skewed, no pun intended, but to me, it's like social media has become nothing but just like content creators and content yeah. consumers. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Like, That's look, right. I'm a content creator. So right. are you like, we're so, products. Don't get me wrong. But like, that's just not at all what it ostensibly was made to be uh, originally. Right. And I was thinking yesterday, I was like, man, is that even still a thing? Because, you know, a lot of these, like for even with me, like the way they Facebook changed where it used to, if you followed me and I posted something, you saw it. Right. Right. Because you follow someone to see what they post. Then right. Facebook changed all that so they could charge people to make sure people see their post or whatever, you know, and it's like now. Threads comes out and Threads is like, yeah, you can follow people, but there's going to be stuff on your timeline that's from random people you don't follow or whatever. Right. It's like, what the fuck is any of this? It's like, it's all, it's all just an algorithm now. It's like, right. it doesn't matter who your friend, who your face, your social media friends are, who you follow or whatever. You still just get what the algorithm gives you, like regardless. Right. And that's all, none of that was part of it when it first started. You know what I mean? Like, and it's weird. It's all weird. Yeah, I mean, my mom certainly does look at videos and stuff on Facebook, but not because she's seeking them out, just because like they happen to her. That's like what I'm they saying. just yeah. But um, like my mom and I know my I call her my mamma in law. Um, uh, she's my sister in law's mamma. Uh, anyways, like those people of that age, like their primary purpose, at least what they think or what they're trying to do on Facebook, is to like they want to see pictures of other people's grandbabies. Grand yeah, yeah. Like right. that's, that's what they want. And also another good feature of that is like, they'll share their chicken casserole recipes and stuff like that. It's a big community. Whereas like, you know, used to, in order for me to get you my chicken casserole recipe, I would have to write it in the church cookbook and you would have to go down there and buy the church cookbook. 
but now we can do it all here. But yeah, primarily like, and I know my dad also watches videos and stuff, but like, I, I think my dad's favorite part of Facebook at least is like, he checks in on his old buddies that are still playing in bands and he sees where they are and he's like, oh man, they're doing great. So like that function is there, but it's very generational. Like I, like I, the, the current generation I bet they don't even know that that's what Facebook was originally for. Right. I feel like they, I don't know, they've got like their dating apps and stuff. And then they've yeah. got like Discord for their buddies, Specific chat niche. groups or whatever. Yeah. yeah, that type of thing. And then all the other social media platforms, I think, are just straight up content machines for them. That's all yeah. they use them for. They get on there and just, you know, watch stuff that hits for them or whatever. Like, that's all it is. Um, and like I said, me and you directly benefit from that. So don't get me wrong, but it is weird. The whole thing is weird. It's weird. Weird, wild stuff. It, it is, is weird, wild stuff. But me and you both have also said that uh, there is a number we have in our head, money-wise, yeah. where the second we hit that number, bye-bye to all that shit, and I yeah. can't... Or, you know, we have a person who posts right. on our Well, behalf. you know, it depends. It, it now depends on how much this youth juice is going to cost. You know what I'm saying? But That's uh, true. But That's yeah. true. Yeah, I'm trying um, to get that. Well, yeah, you want to take a wild. break and then... Yeah, let's take a break gears? and then... Yeah, yes, let's do that. Y'all, have you ever tried to break a bad habit and it felt like you're just trying to climb Everest and flip-flops? We've all been there, haven't we? But here's a breath of fresh air for you. Fume. It's not about giving up. It's about switching it up. Fume takes your habit and simply makes it better, healthier, and a whole lot more enjoyable. Fume is an innovative, award-winning flavored air device that does just that. Instead of vapor, fume uses flavored air. Instead of electronics, fume is completely natural. And instead of harmful chemicals, fume uses delicious flavors. You get it. Instead of bad, fume is good. It's a habit you're free to enjoy, and it makes replacing your bad habit easy. Your fume comes with an adjustable airflow dial and is designed with movable, movable parts and magnets for fidgeting, giving your fingers a lot to do, which is, of course, helpful for de-stressing and anxiety. While breaking your habit. Cho, tell them more. Ah, oh, Trey, fume good. Other stuff bad. I've been saying it for a long time. The taste is the first thing that blew me away. You know, I was like, okay, uh, this will be, it doesn't have any of the stuff that normally used to hit for me. So it's really going to have to come through in the taste department. And it does. My favorite is like, it's like this little orange herbally type situation. And I've been saying for a long time, I've been doing oxygen all wrong. Regular oxygen, boo. Oxygen filtered through my little fume, uh, cool looking baseball bat thing. That's the stuff. Tastes great. Smells good. I do love fidgeting. I'm a big fidgeter. I like fidgeting with my fume. It is the perfect way to do stuff uh, of that nature with. And it's beautiful. It's real wood. It looks like a it looks like um a steering wheel on a rapper's uh vehicle in the 90s wood grain you know what I'm saying plus fumes just released a magnetic stand for your fumes so there's no more losing it around the house which is good cuz I have uh ADD it's built with fidgeting in mind you can spin your fume around on it just brr, 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 like a propeller hat that everyone probably thinks I wear start the year off right with the good habit by going to tryfume.com slash POA and getting the journey pack today. Fume is giving listeners of the show 10% off when they use our code POA to help make starting the good habit that much easier. Tryfume.com slash POA. Thank you. This here episode is sponsored by Blue Chew. Let's talk about sex, babe. Guys, remember the days you were always ready to go, always ready to throw down in the bedroom? Yeah. Those days may be past, but it doesn't matter. You can get them back. You can increase your performance. You can get that extra confidence in bed. It works. Listen up. BlueChew.com. BlueChew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra, Cialis, and Levitra, but in chewable tablets and at a fraction of the cost. You can take them anytime, day or night, so you can plan ahead to get down, or you can just be ready to get down whenever an opportunity comes up. The process is simple. Sign up at bluechew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. That's the best part of the whole thing. It's all done down there on the internet there, which means no more awkward visits to the doctor's office, no more weird wiener conversations, no waiting in line at the pharmacy and running into your high school librarian. None of that. Blue Chew's tablets are made right here in the U.S. of A. Prepared and shipped direct to your door in a very discreet package. Cho, you're a devotee. I love it. I love it, man. Uh, it is, uh, I, and, and you know what? I hate having awkward wiener conversations. One of my least favorite conversations to have. And a lot of people ask me, they say, Corey, does Blue Chew work? 
And I say, listen to me, it makes my dick harder than having a meaningful conversation with my father about all the recent campus protests. You know what I'm saying? It's real hard. Try it free for a month and see. You're going to love it. You could be missing out on the best sex of your life. Again, it comes in a discreet package, so you ain't got to go down to the pharmacy where you went to high school with a girl and have her be like, hey, something wrong with your wiener? And I have to be like, ain't nothing wrong with my wiener. I just like my wiener to have that extra oomph, that extra je ne sais quoi, as it were. Love giving my wiener je ne sais quoi. Uh, first impressions are important. Well, so are lasting impressions. And there's nothing sexier than confidence. Blue Chew wants to help you have better sex. Discover your options at bluechew.com. Chew it and do it. And we've got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew for free. That must be a misprint, but it's not right there. F-R-E-E, free. When you use our promo code POA at checkout, just pay $5 shipping. That's bluechew.com, promo code POA to receive your first month for free. Visit bluechew.com for more details and important safety information. And we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring this podcast and getting us a rock hard wiener. All right, we're back, everybody. I don't know what we're coming back into. We didn't cover that up top like we normally do, so I have no idea what's about to happen. And you don't either, audience members, airheads. So, Cho, why don't, well, actually, I guess you probably read the description and the title, so you do know, but I don't know. But we're about to all find out. Cho, what's about to happen here? Well, interestingly enough, uh, this is going to end up being a two-parter, but it was not intended to be that way. So I'll tell you what happened. Um Initially, I was I was listening to some podcast or reading something and I saw Tina Turner came up, you know, and I remembered the whole famous thing about Tina Turner had her legs insured for like five million dollars or some shit like that. And Uh I was like, I was like, oh, I know she's not the only one that had something like that done. Let me uh, let me look into that and see get like a fun list that we can use as just some sort of bullshit, you know, topic. And in researching that i came across a name that i had heard several times before but in no relation to tina turner and anything such as that and it was the policyholder that does all of these wild claims and that is lloyd's of london okay i've heard of lloyd's of london i didn't know i don't think i knew that they were the so they're any kind of wild ass celebrity insurance policy it's always lloyd's of london that's like their bag that's what they do that's their specialty i guess i'm not i can't say it's always Lloyd's of London, but I would definitely say that it is primarily Lloyd's of London. And I'll right. get, I didn't like, didn't JLo get her butt in, yep. insured, right? Beyonce's butt is insured. Somebody, I know a lot of singers have gotten like their vocal cords insured and stuff. Bruce like Springsteen, that, which that is like, to me, that's, I, that ain't even weird to me. No, of course not like, weird, but it's, 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 it's not that it's weird. It just takes a special type of policy because like, how do you, how do you determine when there's a claim? It's like, does his voice have to completely be shut off? Or it's like, if it's just a little scratchy, he gets paid or whatever. And again, I'm not going to get into the entire history of Lloyd's of London simply because I need to look further into it. Like I had this revelation too late of like, holy fuck, there's way more to this. But like the reason that Lloyd's of London is able to do that is because they're not technically an insurance company. They're like a marketplace that houses all of these individual insurance people. And they have like franchisees and shit. Like Lloyd's of London is one thing, but then also a place can like, if a place lives up to the standard of Lloyd's of London, Lloyd's of London will allow them to put a Lloyd's of London sticker on their wall and be like, we're a part of Lloyd's of London or whatever. And Lloyd's of London, what they do that's different than most insurance companies is like each franchisee obviously has a certain amount of money that they have, which they use to pay out claims and stuff. You know, obviously, like with insurance, people pay you for a policy, that money goes into a big pot and then Hopefully for the insurance people, they don't ever have to fucking give none right. of it back because well, everything often, is fine. And oftentimes they don't. I've I've been fascinated by insurance ever since my brain like sort of wrapped itself around what it even is. It's like, dude, whoever the first person was that came up with insurance was Genius. a brilliant motherfucker. Because like, for the most part, insurance is just people paying you for literally nothing. Right. right. And it's like. It's all I, Chris Rock had a bit about it. it's like in case shit, yeah, right? in case shit. Like, and if shit don't happen, shouldn't I get my money back? And you don't, and that's of the whole not. thing. And so it's like when you have enough clients and they're all paying you every single month for literally nothing, and then one client has some shit go down, you got to pay that out. That don't hit, but you still, but all your other clients are still fine. They still paid you that month for nothing. 
It just seems like a hell of a racket. It's weird, but it's weird though. I call it a hell of a racket. You do it is, need it, but it's but you do need it. Like it's like that's that's it, that's the that's makings of a good it, racket. That's what makes it so right, so complicated or whatever. Is it's like I mean you got to have insurance, you know. But like at the same time, when you think about the concept of insurance and how it mostly works, it's like like dude, I'm um, like there's no telling how much I've paid my car insurance right company Never over the it. years and. I haven't had to use my car insurance in 15 years since I was 20 something. Right. You know what I mean? And like, if you added all, all those premiums up ever since then, I mean, it's tens of thousands of dollars at least that I paid them for literally nothing. Which means that you bought someone else a new car. Right. But, but you know, if I get fucking T-boned or something tomorrow or whatever, then like, uh, I'm going to be glad to have it, you know? Also legally you have to have it. Well, yeah. (laughs) With a car. Yeah, right, with a car, yeah, you, you have to have it, right? But just it all works that way, you know what I mean? It's, it's, uh, I don't know. I've always had a fascination with insurance my whole well, life. Well, what makes it well good because we're going to talk life. about it way more next week. I mean, I am definitely going to rattle off the stuff that I have off the top of my brain on Lloyd's of London, uh, and I, but I kind of don't want to tell you why I know who they are because I feel like that's burying the lead, and that will be interesting to reveal later. Um, but like, also, you you mentioned like. We pay them for nothing. And then like, you know, well, but then if one person has this, they pay it out of all that. But like, dude, the another thing that makes it such a racket is like these fucking policies that you have have so many goddamn stipulations that like that they, t- well, yeah. they go out of their way to often just be like, no, you know what? We're actually not paying. That. Of course. Well, that's how they, you know, <laughs> that's not. how they keep their money. Yeah. They have people whose whole job is to insurance fraud. Find a way to keep you from getting your insurance money. Like it, anything they can, any kind of, any little caveat or loophole or whatever they can activate to keep you from getting your insurance money, they're going to do it every right. single time. Like you have to have a watertight case for them to give you the money that they fucking owe you. Oh, you. you know what I mean? yeah. A lot of times, depending on how old you are, I, the money they owe you back, I bet ain't even that much more than the amount of money you've just straight up given them over the years. And they'll still find ways to fuck you out of it if they can. It's like, I mean, it's related to that conversation we were having earlier about everything being a nightmare (laughs) because of capitalism and money and the way it all works. But, but yeah. Yeah. And what, what I learned too, in just my brief reading, and, and again, I'm about to get to the list of like the craziest things that people have had insured through Lloyd's of London. But like, I didn't really know that how this worked, but like they're in it with Lloyd's of London, like I said, they're like a marketplace for they, they're kind of like a, um, God damn it. I don't even really know how to describe them, dude. They're just so wild that like they're just, they're the place insurance people go to, to like, God damn it. Okay. It's like, Pizza Hut is a pizzeria, but Pizza Hut gets the pizza shit from a Whole Foods supplier. And like Lloyd's of London is kind of that for the insurance world in some way. Um, Like, you know, when the Titanic was insured, which it had to be, right? Um, Well, first off, can you guess how much the Titanic was insured for in that time's money? Oh, I've... $5 $5 million? It was only a million, which okay. I thought was crazy. Now, granted, I guess they were like, don't worry, it's not going to sink. We've already said that. Of course. But like, but, like, there wasn't one insurance company that took that on. What it was was, like, Lloyd's yeah, of London they- was involved, and people had certain points on it where it was like, okay, I'll insure 1% of this, or and I'll, okay, well, you know what? Okay. I'll insure 5% of this. And the reason, like, there would be someone who's like, I'll insure 1% of it. It's because that's the only capital they had to put down. But then there were some people that were like, oh, dude, I want to insure as much of this as possible because right. it's not going to yeah. sink. And then okay. I'll just get all that fucking It's kind of like another stock market thing. It's a yes. gambling thing. And Lloyd's of London is like a bookie or a broker or something. Yeah. Where it's like you, They're like NASDAQ. You could, you could come to them and be like, I'll put in $100,000 of this or whatever, like, if it if it pays out, or, yeah, you know, a hundred thousand dollars worth of the claim to get whatever percentage that is of the premium right now, and my bet is that I'll never have to pay that hundred thousand dollars. So essentially, I just, to, I just get to keep that five thousand or whatever it is, and they compile those from all these different insurance providers, and that makes the policy whole, and they're the ones that put that together. That's what you're saying, pretty much, yeah. Okay. And the and the reason though that Lloyd's of London is so popular, especially amongst celebrities, is because you know we were just talking about like all oh, these insurance companies will find anything they can to not fucking pay. 
Lloyd's of London actually don't roll like that. Like they fucking pay. Like they're really good about like, hey, you said it happened. Here's your fucking money. But the reason that they can do that is because they have so much goddamn capital that it's worth it to them to be the brand that is so um, that you yeah. can count on. You right. know what I mean? Yeah. Well, they that's how you that's how you uh, woo the bourgeois clientele. That's how you get the most rich, famous people in the world. To, right. To deal with you. Right. It, when something happened, like something happens with JLo's butt, you can't fuck her over. She'll, right. She'll tell everybody they'll all find out and then none of them will want to work with her anymore. Right. So you, you can't do that. Right. But more yeah. than likely, and they know this. With regular, when your clientele is right. regular people, you fuck them over at every turn as of much course. as you possibly can. <laughs> right. And also they have the knowledge of like, look, what's going to happen to JLo's butt? <laughs> like, right. what are the odds that she will get in a wreck and it just disfigures her butt. Her butt right. You know what I'm saying? But anyways, um, and, and the ways that they do that is, like I said, there's, there's, there's a whole bunch of companies. They're called syndicates that are like syndicates of Lloyd's of London. And they only have like, each of them only has a certain amount of capital to actually make their payouts. But Lloyd's of London has an agreement that like, hey, you got a client and their payout's going to be more than you've got. We, we will take care of it. All, we all, like every single company, pays into this big fund so that they always have a reserve to make sure that like, don't worry, we got right. it because the most important part is everyone knowing that we are super reliable and we handle extreme insane cases. Right. So the, all that's very interesting. There's way more interesting stuff about Lloyd's of London. However, I'm not at liberty to discuss it right now, but I, I will later. Let's get into some of those uh, wild things that they ensure. I've got a couple lists here. Um, remember Betty Grable, mm -hmm. the uh, star? She is actually the one that inspired the phrase million dollar legs uh, because she was the first person to go to Lloyd's of London uh, when the 20th Century Fox executives, they went over there and they were like, hey, she's in our movies. Her legs hit real hard. In case something happens to her legs, we need to make it worth it for us. So she had a million dollars per leg, and this was in the golden era of Hollywood. That's a fuck ton of money. Yeah, I don't, I don't really. Well, okay, I guess I do get why the studio did it. The studio did it because if something happened to Betty Grable's legs, their project was fucking dead. Fucked up, yeah, they're fucked over, so they need they need financial reassurance for that or whatever. It's just like when they, you know, they still to this day they insure their stars, and it's like this whole with insurance, the whole thing is like. What is the actual probability of this thing really happening? Right. right. And if it if it seems probable, then we ain't gonna do it. Which is like the famous story, of, you know, Robert Downey. Robert Jr. Downey Jr. Uninsurable, lunatic, heroin addict, or whatever. And he was uninsurable. And then Mel Gibson went to bat for him personally, or whatever. And Mel Gibson like underwrote his insurance policy for Iron Man or something. Yeah. And then he got back in, and it's like, but yeah, because they the insurance company, you know, the studio wants insurance for hey. We need to ensure the possibility of our star going crazy. Right. If our star goes crazy. This whole production is fucked and we're going to be out a lot of money. So we'll pay you X amount so that in the event of our star going crazy, you will then re we will recoup that from you. But if it don't happen, you just get to keep all keep that, that money. money. And in that instance, Lloyd, whoever it was, Lloyd's of London or whoever looked at it and were like, looked at RDJ and were like, he seems like he's going to go crazy. Right. Right? Like, like right. We don't feel comfortable betting on him not going crazy yeah. on account of his track record of going crazy. Right. Uh, so we don't want to do that. Right. And then, you know, he was this close to being out of the industry forever until until golden hearted Mel Gibson stepped up to the plate, made it uh -huh. happen for him. What are you going to do? He's yeah. not Jewish. So well, I was about to say yeah. he's not Robert Downey Weinberg. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Um, well, you know, there's another, uh, I say famous case of this, but actually it's only sort of like, there's two combating rumors of what actually happened in this situation. Like a real famous one is, and this is regarding the uh, making of the movie Blazing Saddles. As you know, as a lot of people know, that was written by Mel Brooks and Richard, Richard Pryor. Pryor right. Now, Richard Pryor had gone on as saying, that him and Mel Brooks agreed on this because like everyone was like, well, you should be, you should be Sheriff Bart. Like you should mm -hmm. be like Cleavon Little shouldn't, Cleavon Little was not even in the picture. Right. And Richard Pryor went on record as saying like, this was his idea. He's like, 
no, 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 because this role is so good. If I do it, this becomes another Richard Pryor movie. And all the focus is on Richard Pryor, whereas like as a whole, this movie is bigger than one person. And therefore, I think it should be an unknown. Now, that was like what everybody said for a long time. But there have been executives over the years, not in like deathbed confessions or whatever, that were like, it's nice that they say that. But the real reason is Warner Brothers could not get Richard Pryor insured, insured. because yeah. he had He'd recently set himself on fire. Right. Stuff. Yeah, exactly. Right. Now, I choose to believe the first thing because it's more Hollywood romance. And frankly, I actually because I agree with it 100 percent. As awesome as Richard Pryor is, I don't think that movie hits as hard with him playing Cleveland Little's role. Like, I think that Cleavon Little doing it, like with Richard Pryor, you'd be taken out of it because you'd be seeing Richard Pryor. You know what I mean? Whereas Cleavon Little, you just, you believed it was Sheriff Bart. Does that make sense? Of course it makes sense. You know, what's also wild to think about that is like, if that isn't true, if it is the second thing and that first thing was just spin, that means there was like some PR consultant spin doctor person yeah, who crushed whose it. whole job was like, coming up with shit like that yeah and he was like this is going to be the narrative and it worked like a fucking yeah. charm at least for most of the time and it's like that's also wild to think about like all like yeah all these machinations of these gigantic entities and stuff especially public facing entities and and they have to contend with that type of shit all the time and build a narrative and all this stuff and Sometimes imagine how many different things there are like that that work so well that there's no you never know thing report right right you never hear anything to the contrary and everybody just buys it forever like you know that's happened countless times that's Dude, happened. Note to self: We need to do an episode on famous Hollywood PR scandals that either worked or didn't work because that is that is interesting. Uh, anyways, other stars that have had their legs specifically insured, all as we know, Tina Turner, David Beckham. And uh, my favorite, can you guess someone who might have had their legs insured? They're not one. Of, they're not a super celebrity like these people. But I mean, you definitely know who he is. The uh, Lord of the Dance. Yes, Michael Nailed Flatley. It. Michael Flatley. My yeah. man. Yeah. Uh, his Mer legs was putting in work, bro. That's true. So David Beckham had his legs insured. Obviously, he's a soccer player. Football, excuse me, for uh, all our people across the pond. There's another athlete here that had insurance from Lloyd's of London. He was an uh, Australian cricketer, uh, but he his name was Merv Hughes. But what he had insured was his mustache. Um, he took a three hundred and sixty thousand dollar insurance policy out on his walrus uh, mustache, and the reason for his stash. Um, his stash, not to mention his outsized physique and stellar play, was critical to his larger-than-life persona. Uh, it was like a trademark for him, like and the company. So, and but this, I don't what understand. What is going to happen to right. a mustache? It, it also gets that burnt one's, off. That one seems e easily fraud, fraud, fraudable. Yeah. Fraud, right. Whatever. It's Shave like, it know, off. You pay a couple of spaghetti people. You know, right. 15 grand each to assault you in the alleyway and hold you down and shave your mustache off <laughs> and you get your $360,000 payout and give them their 30, 30 grand, you know, total. And then you're sitting pretty and then you grow it back and you're fine. Right. No, I mean, I, I couldn't agree more. Like the only thing I could think of was like, literally, I don't know. He's in cricket. He plays cricket. I don't know if they're as wild as fucking soccer or football people, but like, you know, he, he misses a goal or something and somebody throws acid in his face. Right, yeah. <laughs> and storms the field and rips his mustache yeah, out. Hair by hair. By hair. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So anyways, there's a mustache. This is a, this is a very interesting one that I like the famous comedy routine from Abbott and Costello. You know, their most famous comedy routine. Who's on first. Who's on first. Exactly. They had that, uh, insured, uh, at tw at $250,000 over five years. And the reason they had it insures was in the event that they split up, like in the event that one of them decided, fuck this, I'm not going to be in this group anymore. Uh, they never had to use it, uh, but they, even though they did part ways uh, because the IRS came after them for back taxes and shit. And See, it's weird to me insuring a thing that the, claim holder has agency over. Do you right. know what I'm saying? Like, 
it's up to them whether they split up or not. And they're right. the ones holding the, they are the ones who have insured against the possibility that they split up. That just, that seems odd. Well, you maybe and like you could, they could just decide at any time to split up and fucking, and then get, I don't know, get the claim and then get back together right after that or whatever. Like, I, you know, this is why people use Lloyd's of London for these types of claims, knowing that they'll pay out. But like, I guess it, I don't know the actual, like, verbiage on the policy but like it could have been a situation where like it's if one of them decides they don't want to be in the group anymore it fucks the other one over you know what i mean like if abbott just decides to leave he's like well i can't be doing who's on first with just any motherfucker so like i'm gonna need this money to float me until i can come up with a new act or whatever but you're right like them both getting it they could have just at the end of that run, just been like, let's split up, take this money. And like, dude, $250,000 back when Abbott and Costello were fucking around. Like that's mm-hmm. more than enough to fucking retire on, start investing or whatever. Mm-hmm. Now, granted, I also don't know what I don't have the figures here for is like how much money it costs them on their premium to like insure right. that. Because, you know, it's not like you can just go give me insurance on this. I'll see you later. Like you got to put some shit down. Right. Uh, Keith Richard has his hands insured. Um, as you said earlier, Springsteen has his voice insured. This is an interesting one. Um, Gene Simmons, you want to know what he's got insured? His tongue, his tongue, uh, more than a million dollars back in the seventies. And again, I guess that's like if someone cut it out. Right. But see, so he did that in the seventies. I don't know what the premium was either, but you know, now it's 50 years later, Lloyd's of London. They made bank off of that. Yes, they did. You know I mean? They sure did, man. Um, but like, I mean, dude, like when was it you realized that, that was his real tongue? I don't think I ever questioned that that was his real tongue. What, when I was, thought, a, you thought it was like a prosthetic or something. When there was a certain point, like when I was a kid, I just believed it no matter what. And then I got a little bit older, and I was like, "Wait a minute, I bet you they're doing some fucked up shit." Because that, but then I was like, "Man, it really is his real tongue." Because, dude, it's like it's insane. Like I'm surprised that he never hearing, got into porn. I remember hearing that he had some kind of procedure done to like snip shit underneath his tongue so it would go further out of his mouth or whatever. And I don't know if yeah. that's true or not, but it, but like. I never heard any, I never heard a rumor that it wasn't his real tongue. I did hear rumors that like, oh, he, you know, he, he, Marilyn Manson, he he juiced that tongue. Yeah, Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Uh, And I don't know if that's true or not, but it was always his own tongue in my head. Uh, What do you think uh, Tom Jones took a policy out on? His hips. I don't know. (laughs) uh, That makes more sense. Yeah. What? His chest hair. Uh, That's a a good one. See, there again, like, I don't know. He could just, I, I, I don't know. Like, what, you have a horrible hairspray accident or something, lose all your chest hair and chemo, and then you're out of it. Yeah. Yeah. I guess that's fair. But, but it's like, you think you'd need just a general insurance policy for something like that. You right. Know what I mean? Like, but, but this is also another example of Lloyd's of London cleaning the fuck up because he never had to cash it in. And this was back in right. the 70s and it was a $5 million policy. God damn. So, like, again, the premium on that had to be fucking. Do Crazy. you think if some weird affliction had befallen Tom Jones and all of his chest hair fell out, but he still had all the moxie and the vocal ability and everything else, the physicality that he had before, nothing else changed, and he kept doing his shows, do you think women would have been like, this don't hit? I mean, I am think there's some women that would have been like, I preferred him with the chest hair, right. but I don't but think... I think it, he'd still hit for them. I, I, I don't think they, he would have seen a monetary uh, I, decline. I don't either. Uh, I don't either, but maybe, you know, we're we're children of the 80s. We were born in the 80s. Maybe we yeah. don't understand what it was like in the 70s. It was a whole other world. Them old women, dude, they love chest hair so much that I literally just got a flashback of being at the beauty shop with my grandmother. Um, did you do that? Uh, my two, my aunts, my mom's dad, my, uh, uh, truck driving papa. Yeah. His sisters, my two aunts, aunt, aunt Brenda and aunt Sandy, they owned the beauty shop in Salina. And so I got my hair cut there and I was there all the time. I didn't go with my grandma to the beauty shop because my aunts owned the beauty shop. So I spent a lot of time there. 
Yeah, it was my favorite thing because I just basically live with my grandma. And so every Thursday or Friday, we'd go to the beauty shop. She'd get her p- fucking perm. You're not supposed to get a perm, but once every like two months. Granny got one uh, every goddamn week. Her hair yeah. was brittle as fuck. Uh-huh. Anyways, I'd go with her to entertain me. They'd put me under the thing with the robot helmet and shit. And I'd watch Prices Right. And I just had this memory of, and dude, I could not have been more than five of this woman beehive ass hairdo you know and we were watching the price is right and i'm sitting there just you know laughing at whatever bob barker doing some shit and she looked over at me for no reason and this woman's you know 70s 80s and she touched me on the shoulder and she goes i'll tell you one thing i love a man with a full chest of hair she said that to a five-year-old yeah yeah that's just said it so to weird me. in so many ways because it's like was that supposed to make you feel like shit or something? You I don't know. Because like, like, obviously a five-year-old ain't got no chest. Were you just saying, right. like, well, I don't. Don't hit. hit. Yeah. yeah, right. yeah. Or like, but also, even if it's just like, I'm. so presumably there was somebody on the, t- a man on the TV with some chest hair or something. I guess. Yeah. And she just needed to do that. Lord, honey, tell you what thing. Yeah. But the only person in proximity to her at that time was a kindergartner. Right. Yeah. So she just, but she just did it anyway. Yeah. She I mean, was so dude, committed to it. I have to assume that's what happened. I, yeah, I guess like, or she could have had Alzheimer's, but like, yeah, I, right, I, yeah, I, but like that. she thought you were her second husband or something. But, she but didn't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. It's funny because like at the time, all I remember thinking was that it was gross, but not in a, that a woman was saying this to a five-year-old way. Just that I thought chest hair, hair was gross, gross and I right, thought yeah. she was weird. I was like, what? Because right. like, the thing is, at five years old, I knew about men's physiques. I mean, Baywatch was the most popular show on television when I was five. Like, yeah. you know, all those men had shaved chest. Dude, honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if there was a promo for Baywatch that was on and she saw the, the boys running with their shaved chest. Although right. Hasselhoff had uh, chest hair, I think. And she was just like, I tell you what, I love a man with a full chest so, of hair. Listen, I don't want this to sound more uh, pronounced than 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 I mean it to be because I'm not one of these people. But I do think it's funny to imagine, like, imagine the inverse of that, like a old papa or old oh. uncle guy. Oh. Saying to a five year old girl, it's like, tell you what I like a land hairy strip. pussy. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, right, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Just yeah. how insanely gross that is. How yeah. any anyone on earth is like, oh my god! Like if that, yeah. had, like you're so immediately just revolted by that. Yeah. But an old mamaw doing it to a five year old boy, or it's like, well, that's we a don't... little weird. What was yeah. that about? It's what kind of weird, even right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. but you know, I just, think at five, the difference is, is at five, I could have beat the shit out of that lady. Sure. You know yeah. what I mean? I didn't go nowhere without my Easton T-ball bat on me. You right. know? So. No, dude, but that shit still happens all the time. I mean, Bane's still a baby when he gets a little old. Like, dude, there are people. Uh, this like, is old, my boyfriend. He's old, my little boyfriend. That type of shit. Mm-hmm. Old, Mexican mammals or tias, aunties and stuff at, in line at the school and shit. I've had multiple ones tell me like, like elbow me or whatever and be like he's gonna be very handsome or yeah something. talking about bishop and bishop's like he's like nine years old or something at the time and i you know and i'm just like oh thank you that's very nice it's like when you put it like he's gonna be handsome that's fine but again i would never, never. like um, like imagine saying yeah. that to the she's parent gonna be beating all the dicks off of her girl. She's, right yeah. exactly it's like she's gonna be a looker buddy yeah right? whatever it's like fucking call the cops immediately you know what i mean but that's but uh, but whatever it, it's like you said you already said even at five years old you could whip that mamaw's ass that is the thing that makes it different right it, it is important that difference is but that, it's, like but it, men are never like physically still or not women generally but it but it is still fucking weird they shouldn't get away thing. with it just because i can beat their goddamn ass <laughs> right. or i'll say this right. in that situation i should be allowed to beat their goddamn ass yeah. um Anyways, yeah, like, dude, they, to Bane all the time now, like, women, they'll be like, ooh, he's, th- and this is how gay I am. They'll be like, mm, that one right there, he's going to be a little heartbreaker. Yeah, that's what they always say. He's going to be a heartbreaker. And I, all, my response, I don't always say it out loud, but in my mind, it's like, why would you say that? I'm going to teach him to respect women and not right. cheat on them. And so, like, what do you mean? Are you not going to break anybody's heart? I don't know. But it is, but it, yeah, it is weird. Like, if we, I, dude, I used to work at a daycare. 
And like the girls that worked at the daycare, there would be the little boys and they would be completely appropriate to him. But then their parents would come. They'd be like, how was he today? And he's like, oh, he's my little, you know, he's my little boyfriend right, or yeah. whatever. And I, w- I just remember always thinking, I was like, let me say right. about a girl. Oh, yeah, this is my girlfriend. Dude, I'd yeah. be cuffed, stuffed, have my ass right. whooped, you know, you know, I don't know, whatever. Anyways, another weird thing, uh, speaking of hair, actually, that was insured, Santa's beard. Uh, right. What? Not, not obviously the real Santa, but there was a guy named Brady White who was the Santa to the stars back in the day. He was in all the holiday ads. I assume prob- he might have been the model for the Coca Cola Santa. Uh, okay. Which, like, is the reason that we see Santa as Santa, right? You know yes, that. I do know that. Yeah. Um, anyways, that's what he did. Like, his entire bread and butter was just like, I'm Santa. Uh, so he had, um, a policy, uh, on his, uh, beard. Um, yeah, just I in mean, case that makes sense. See that, that dude, it's like, I totally get that. Cause it's like, I just automatically assume that dude's got exactly one thing yeah. going for him. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I'm like with Tom Jones, I get that his chest hair hit for people, but it's like, I'm like, come on, bro. You hit in a lot of other ways too. If you know what right. I mean? Like it's not that's not the thing. But with that right. dude, it's the thing. If you're that guy, it's like you can't be the Santa to the stars without a fucking beard. So I mean, I get that. Uh also here's another thing. There is something, there is some things that Lloyds of London will not ensure. This is great. Stanley Kubrick, when he was uh putting out 2001 A Space Odyssey, he went to Lloyds of London. And tried to get a policy that would for his genius, his muse. <laughs> Can I insure my muse, please? Uh, no. It's an ethereal sort of a connection I have with the universe that provides me with these brilliant ideas. I'd like to get that insured. No, I'm sorry. What do you do? This is actually really stupid on Lloyd's of London's part, or it kind of goes that they they do have maybe some sort of moral compass where they're like, dude, that's just printing money for us. He tried to get a policy. In the event that there was a real life alien invasion before his movie was released, like because he thought that would fuck it over, as if well, that's yeah. the big thing. Right. That's the yeah, right. Like, what are you going to do with that insurance payout when we're all getting butt fucked by grays or right. whatever? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, we're all getting enslaved by and during an alien invasion. He's like, well, at least I got, at least I recouped that opening weekend. You know, yeah. what I mean? it's like that shit ain't going to matter. And I also, was, obviously, he was wild. He was wild, but I genuinely can't believe that Lloyd's didn't take that slam dunk. <laughs> you know what right. I mean? Because it's like, even well, if they have to pay it out, they'll we'll all be dead. Again, dude, when you work with those types of people and stuff, it's like you got to maintain this kind of yeah aura and integ- integrity and stuff. Yeah, right. You can't be seen as like any kind of shyster or whatever, which is how that would make them look, I think, is what they probably thought. You know, a C- couple other ones here. Um, Troy Palomalu's hair. Yeah. specifically when he was doing head and shoulders ads was uh, mm-hmm. insured for a million dollars. Dolly Parton's titties, mm-hmm. um, 3.8. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention everything I'm saying is in pounds, not dollars. Oh, I'm an oh, asshole, okay. but either way, it's not that big of a difference. Uh, Dolly Parton's titties, 3.8 million pounds for the pair. Uh, the Coast, Costa Rica coffee or Costa coffee coffee company insured the taste buds of their chief taster for 10 million pounds in 2009. Yeah. That just seems insane to me. You that, that motherfucker. That's like when we, all them episodes ago and we covered wine critics and wine tasting stuff. That some bitch can't I, that bothers me. Me too. That that dude ain't tasting that coffee. No different than 99% of other people. I promise you. He, and also he's just like, he's going there and be like, yep, this hits. And they just put it out. They're a huge brand, Costa Coffee or whatever. So they put it out and people keep buying it. And they're like, it must hit. That guy's brilliant. It's like, no, he ain't. He fucking, <laughs> like, I, it, I don't, that don't hit for me. $10 million. Jesus Christ. It don't hit for me either. But speaking of everything you just said, Somerfield insured the olfactory system of their chief wine buyer for 10 million pounds in 2003. So similar. What? Yeah. I, I, I mean, what happened? To, I, I don't know. Like, are they grooming an upcoming, uh, like, olfactorily gifted wine buyer to take? You know what I mean? Like, that dude's yeah. going to die or retire at some point. Then what? Your whole I company know. goes under? You can't I find guess. nobody else to tell you. 
this wine hits. Like, right. I'll, I'll do, do it. it right now. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. Like, <laughs> fucking, <laughs> it's crazy. Because I feel like all you got to do in that scenario is like, if you smell it and you're like, something really don't hit about that. If it's sour or something, anybody could tell you that. And otherwise, if it smells like wine and you put it in the right bottle, no one Nobody, is ever no. going to know. Ever. So as long as it's literally not the wine equivalent of skunked, which anyone can tell by sniffing right. it, I assume, then you're good to go. Also, so like, dudes dudes like that are the reason that people think something tastes good. You tell them that and they believe you. You know what right. I mean? So like, just say it hits and it hits. Right. Um, this one's all right to me. Wyke cheeses ensured the sense of smell of their chief taster, Nigel Pooley. For Nigel Pooley. <laughs> For $5 million, uh, Cadbury's insured their chief taster, Haley Curtis, uh, in case he had a loss of taste. Um, and I'm going to end with this one because we do got to get to airmail. And I've got a lot more on Lloyd's of London for next week, uh, but I have to end with this one because it's so goddamn funny. Um, so most of these celebrities we've been talking about is like their beautiful features, their legs, their titties, all that stuff. But that is not always the case. The 1920s silent film comic Ben Turpin bought a $25,000 insurance policy with Lloyd's to be paid out if his <laughs> if his trademark crossed eyes ever accidentally went yeah. straight. Right. Imagine like imagine a cross-eyed person waking up with straight eyes and being like, "Oh Fuck! no." Yeah, right. <laughs> Just falling apart. Like what am I going to do? You know, like fucking yeah, that's so fun. That's something else there. All right. Well, anyways, more on Lloyd's uh, and the history next week because it's truly some terrific stuff uh, how this shit came to be. So here is some airmail. This is specifically for you, Trey, so that uh, you can address this publicly. And it's going to be hilarious because oh, I, I have a feeling you might just now be finding out. Oh, uh, God. Subject line. Uh, I just found out that the high dive in Gainesville, Florida will be closing in May. That's the venue where Trey is supposed to perform in June. Is there any chance that he can go to a different venue in Gainesville? I'm really upset that yeah. I'm going to have to miss seeing him live. So you're not going to have to miss me. Uh, we, I did know about that. Val, our agent, our touring agent called me like yesterday to tell me about it. So yeah, if you're a Gainesville person, I had a show in Ga I still do have a show in Gainesville, but the venue the show was going to be at, it's just closing down because I they was heard Trey was coming. Right I was coming through and they're like, time to stop hitting. We've been open for 40 years, but this is it. This is clearly yeah. the end of the road. Anyway, obviously that has nothing to do with me, nothing to do with us. Shit just happens. The venue's closing. I can't do anything about that, but we have relocated. I don't think it's public information yet, the new venue, but there, we found another venue we can do it. I don't know how ideal it's going to be for comedy. We're, you know, we're doing the best we can because it's not that far out and we just needed a place to do the You've show. You've already made the sale. But we have a place to do the show. If you, if you are a ticket holder like this person, you should be getting an email soon telling you the new information. You don't have to do nothing different, as I understand it. Just come to this new place, which is also in Gainesville. But yeah, that don't hit, but we do have a backup plan and we've got it worked out, I reckon, and you should be notified soon. So yeah. Right on. Well, there you go. I'm glad we did that. Uh, subject line, Cho topic, colon, woke trans civil war history. Hello. Quick note to say, I think a great topic for Cho would be a, be a trans man and the civil war hero, Albert DJ Cashier. That's a great name. Uh, he was born DJ Cashier. DJ Cashier. He on Cash Money Records. He, <laughs> yeah. to he and Lil Wayne's crew. Goddamn DJ Cashier. Like that's I can't. That's a that's a hell of a rap name to come is. from the Civil War era. It bro. is. Dude. Fucking. He was born. Uh, Jenny Hodgers led the Veterans Parade every year until a doctor discovered his secret, and yet was still buried with official Grand Army of the Republic funer funerary honors because they were apparently woke enough to recognize him as their brother in arms. Rad topic, especially since Corey often covers Civil War trivia. Love the show, and yes, it's cool to say my name if read on airs. L.A. Fields, also a cool name. P.S., and I'm not I'm not going to do this without uh, plugging their stuff. P.S., I have a novel coming out later this year called River Trash that was inspired... Oh, wow! That was inspired by a well-read interview that you guys held with Waylon Payne. That'll be the second sexy LGBT novel you helped inspire. Ha ha. 
I'll send another email when it releases in hopes that it'll make you smile. Well, that's cool as shit. Y'all look for a river trash from L.A. Fields. Uh, Waylon Payne is a very inspirational some bitch. Does hit. I just keep picturing like the start of a rap song when the beat's dropping. I haven't started rapping yet. And you hear like DJ Cashier. And it's like <laughs> ching, cha ching. You know what I mean? It's like you hear the cash register noises. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that's their equivalent of mustard on the beat or whatever. Yeah, right. You know like that's what happens when DJ Cashier produces a song. And then you, you know? and then it's just a, a trap version of when Johnny comes marching home again, <laughs> which would super hit. Uh, subject line: Cheap TVs and robot butlers. Hey y'all, no need to read this on air unless you want to. Well, guess what? I want to. Uh, flat screen TVs have always been made in China with cheap electronics. They didn't get cheap until they became smart TVs. Smart TVs sell your viewing data to streaming services, which is why they can be cheap. Obviously, Netflix knows what you watch on Netflix, but Hulu pays the TV manufacturer to figure out what you're watching on Netflix. That's how the manufacturer makes their money, and that's the only reason TVs are so cheap now. Try to find a dumb TV if you can't even find one. They're still expensive because the manufacturer doesn't get the secondary revenue source from selling your data. That's very interesting. So... For robot butlers to ever get cheap, the manufacturer will probably be harvesting your data. Your robot butler, let's just call her Alexa for no reason at all, will have a front row seat to every goddamn thing you do, which is very valuable to companies. Also, have y'all seen the trouble that the Cybertruck is having or ever tried to get a scanner to work? Trying to troubleshoot my robot butler who won't connect to the Wi-Fi and keeps giving me error messages sounds fucking terrible. You'll have to get on some support chat with another AI who keeps giving you solutions that don't work until they decide to recall the goddamn thing. So now you got to ship it back to the manufacturer so they can send you a new one that you'll have to set up all over again. Seems like a lot of work just to have the privilege of having Amazon spy in your house. I'd rather watch the goddamn dishes. Once again, the promise of science is ruined by the demands of capitalism. Exactly what we were just talking about. That's wild. Yeah. So on point. Also, it's like, I didn't realize that smart Mark listened to the show. (laughs) Just going in on the dystopia, bro. Yeah. yeah, Wild how on point that is what we were talking about earlier. Like, just this this part. What's this person's name? Did they Uh, say you shouldn't say it or? Uh, they didn't say if I could say it or not. I wish I could give them credit. Uh, Y'all email me again and I'll, I'll say your name. Uh, they said, sorry to be a bummer, by the way. Love y'all. Come to Athens, Georgia again. Um, but yeah, I want to say their name because that was a really fucking good email and, and we will end with that one. But yeah, that one really tied the room together. Sure did. All right, y'all listen, come see me. I'm in Oklahoma City soon and then Buffalo and Pittsburgh and a bunch of other Virginia, Florida coming up soon, including Gainesville. That show is still happening, albeit at a new venue. Go to TreyCrowder.com and check it out. And if you're in Gainesville, watch your email. You should be notified very soon like within days uh mother's day night you know i'm not i'm not touring any right now until amber gets out of school but mother's day night i'll be in chattanooga tennessee at jj's bohemia opening uh, actually hosting the show for my good buddy john michael bond who is recording his new album uh also on the show friends of the show a good cop, rad cop. So it's going to be a fucking banger. That's at JJ's Bohemia. There is limited seating. Honestly, it might be sold out, but go, you know, go check it out. Um, also, bonuscory.com. That is where I put my rants and ravings and bonus videos and essays and all sorts of stuff like that. Bonuscory.com. I appreciate all the people who have been free subscribers for years who have just bumped up to the paid subscriber. That is uh, tremendous. And uh, your heroes, I love you. And uh, furthermore, oh, listen to Well Read and listen to uh, Weekly Skews and listen to Gravy Baby. All the stuff in the extended SKU universe. Uh, stay fancy, motherfuckers. And uh, Gerard uh, Gerard Depardieu is on trial, so be watching that. Here's Lydia Loveless. One, two, mm-hmm. three, four. One, two, three, four. Royalty rednecks are alike. They both like cutting and picking fights. Biscuits and baked beans where they don't belong. Sit on down with Corey and Trey and learn some fancy shit. Today we'll laugh a little even when they're wrong. They'll take you to a magical place where if you call someone a cut, nobody cares. They keep it debonair at putting on airs, putting on airs, putting on airs.